Hey everybody, hope everybody's being safe and sound. I don't know what day you are on your lockdown. I've lost track of mine. But anyway, I'm here on the edge of beautiful Whitey Mount National Park in my beautiful morgue. I thought I'd give you all just a little bit of a tour of my uh, my workshop and uh, my place, the, the home of escape or die. And I'd like to welcome you in on a private tour. So we step inside, don't be afraid. Nothing in here will really bite. Well, there are things that bite, but what I have, when we first come into the morgue, I actually have a, a jail cell. This is a jail cell uh, that I escaped from with my friend uh, Philip Hornan back in 1985. Uh, there's a picture of Phil uh, locked up in the jail cell with his hands. And if you look right under his elbow, you'll see my, my little face right there i'm actually the rcmp locked me up in a straitjacket and strapped me down to the uh to the bunk to escape so anyway we'll we'll uh enter into the morgue when they tore down the old rcmp uh station they donated the uh jail cell to philip's uh mom and dad in the for the, uh, the magic museum so as we kind of come in i have a uh variety of items and memorabilia from escapes from that I performed around around the world so uh, if you see anything in particular uh, that I didn't mention or you'd like to see more of leave a comment and I'll, I'll tell you what it's all about but anyway as we walk into the morgue you can see different posters me hanging on my toes from uh, the Hoover Dam in Las Vegas 726 feet in the air this is actually the uh, trap piece that I used. Uh, no monkeying around. It was very dangerous. I, I promised my mom I'd never do that damn escape again, and I didn't. Uh, over there, you'll see a, a wooden barrel that I did as a promotion for the IMAX film uh, Niagara Falls, uh, Daredevils, and something or other. Uh, this is actually a working shop as well as my collection. Uh, I kind of review tapes and uh, movies and stuff. I don't know what's what I was watching last, but we can kind of take take a look here and see what we got. And what's playing? Of course, the amazing Randy, my mentor. Uh, my inspiration, that, that the greatest escape artist lives in Sudini, and that's him performing on an episode of uh, Happy Days back in about 1976 or 77 uh, with Richard Cunningham, raising some money for the orphans. And what's really cool, Randy has always been a big supporter. Because I actually have the uh, Mason Randy's Houdini milk can that he used on that episode of Happy Days. It comes on a little later on when Randy is unable to do the escape because he gets hurt or has too much to drink because of uh, Potsy and, and, and uh, Fonzie was actually in that, that can. You'll see some of my uh, Randy uh, memorabilia, uh, the hanging apparatus that Randy used to hang over Niagara Falls. There's a picture of him hanging over there. And just uh, Randy really helped take my escape to the to the next level and something that I'll always always be indebted for him for for uh, what he saw in a young age, escape artist back when as in my early 20s. This is something that's really cool too. This is uh, Doug Henning's water torture cell that he used on his very first TV special uh, back in 1975, and they did a live TV special on NBC and uh, filled it full of water. Uh, he had his ankles locked, lowered into it, and he had to escape. And this was, of course, recreating uh, Houdini's great escape uh, from the, the water torture cell back. That was Houdini's biggest escape. That poster is uh, uh, from Norm Nielsen and uh, for his collection. Over here, I have a few special items. I have the, this is my mommy. I used to use that on my uh, escape show back in the 80s. I'd get mummified locked in there. Uh, this is a, a really important piece here. This is my uh, 
my coffin. And, and some of you might remember way back in Halloween of 1983, I was chained up, locked inside of this coffin, and I had to escape. I was uh, honoring Houdini, who died on Halloween back in 1926. Unfortunately, I didn't make the escape, and I died. I spent over four minutes underwater. Uh, the Winnipeg Ambulance Service dragged me out, took me to the Health Science Center, brought me back to life. It was uh, scarier than coronavirus at the time. Uh, my Dean Gunnarsson drink machine, lots of uh, Dr. Pepper products, my old uh, show jacket, again from the 80s and early 90s. There's a picture of uh, me wearing it with, of course, my, my brother, who was my longtime safety coordinator and stage assistant, uh, really helped me so much in the, the early part of my career and had to retire back in 1995 because of uh, a head injury that we had in a bad car accident. This is kind of like my mini little stage here. We're practicing this chair actually belonged to uh, my friend uh, Philip, who uh, had a five-year battle of, of cancer and uh, who, was, who was a good friend. We used to go and do a lot of jail breaks back in the, the 80s, let the RCMP lock us up, escape and get out, and that was Phil's chair that came from the Magic Museum. There, there's a poster of Phil and I getting locked up. That was a poster we did as a fundraiser for uh, Money for Cancer. This is my... Uh, Houdini safe. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's Houdini. I keep my most valuable things in there. What do we got? Oh yeah, Dean Gunnarsson. Card set, my book. Uh, actually, <laughs> this is uh, Dean Gunnarsson, The Making of a Skateboarder. I, I talked about uh, uh, Phil and our adventures in here. I thought also uh, Carolyn Gray wrote an excellent uh, chapter about me dying in the uh, the coffin underwater so it's something that uh, uh, I don't say to make money because I, I don't make any money off uh, that the, the book whatsoever but it's an amazing story and uh, something that I, I wanted to uh, to tell and, and share with everybody uh, this is my uh, Russian death tank that was used on my uh, uh, TV show Escape or Die originally. We filmed the uh, plans for it back in northern China years ago and brought it back to, uh, to life. This was the uh, original Russian death tank. And again, more handcuffs. One thing you'll see a lot of when you come to the uh, to morgue is handcuffs. I have handcuffs everywhere. And uh, of course, there's my friend uh, Bubbles. Hey, Bubbles, how you doing? And of course, everybody asks, why do I call him Bubbles? because uh, he, he likes lots of bubbles, but not today, I guess. Uh, hey, Bubbles, how's it going? <laughs> and uh, what do I got? We got all kinds of things. There's, this is a poster from a TV special I did with NBC called The World's Most Dangerous Magic 2, where they uh, locked me up, hung me from the trapeze bar a bunch of uh, hungry alligators in the swamps of Florida. Another uh, famous Las Vegas magician uh, copied that a few years ago. Uh, after I didn't give him permission, but this is uh, a coffin that I used again on my uh, TV show, Escape or Die. They locked me up, and there we went. Uh, we went down to the Bahamas, got locked in it, threw me into the ocean, chummed the ocean for. Uh, Lots and lots of sharks, lots of sharks, and we uh, managed to, to escape. Uh, it was really cool. And just lots of things. Again, like I said, this is kind of a working shop. I have lots of uh, handcuffs, tools when I get ready for my shows. This is a really cool piece made by uh, a sculpture and, and artist uh, and a good friend, uh, Kent Hart. And he made a body cast from it. The idea of this was from the original uh, The Empire Strikes Back with Harrison Ford as, uh, as uh, Han Solo. And so we recreated that where I'm kind of uh, frozen in, in time. And of course, up there is a lot of my Houdini posters and pictures. Uh, you can see up there, there's a really good friend 
you know, uh, John Bushy and Terry Roses. Unfortunately, John passed away from cancer a couple years ago, but John was was uh, really instrumental and in, again helped me get going, getting my first handcuffs and a antique handcuffs from Terry and, and John. And so I call this wall here. It's my tribute wall to uh, to John. I think about him all all the time. If you look above me. This is the uh, the Jaws of Death. Um, one, of, one of my escapes, where I'll get locked up, hang in between there uh, with a rope. Rope's on fire and I have to escape before it comes crashing down. Uh, it's, it's really cool and fun, fun to do. There's a, uh, a poster of it there that I had designed. Uh, and just lots of, lots of little artifacts and tidbits. And, uh, people come and ask to get a tour of the, the morgue. Uh, there's lots of things to look at. A lot of my Houdini books, pictures, programs from over the years. Uh, lots of stuff. My Dean Gunnarsson bobblehead doll. Lots, lots of pieces. There's uh, my good friend Gustavo Loria from Colombia. The greatest magician in all of South America. Good, good guy. Uh, this is the uh, the death cage. We use this again on my TV show, Escape or Die. We were locked up out high in the mountains in, uh, in China and had to escape before a bomb went off and blew us up. There's a poster of it down on the bottom. Uh, actually, this isn't the cage from China. It got destroyed. This is the practice case that we use here. Uh, this is the the world's largest actual beer can. Uh, we use that again on my TV show, Escape or Die. Luck filled it up full of 500 liters of uh, deep film beer in Dallas. Locked me in there and I had to get out. The worst part was is that I don't drink. And uh, I had to get out. My dad said it was... A, Waste of 500 liters of good beer, but anybody just drank his way out. But, but anyway, just just lots of pizzas, lots of fun things. Again, I got lots of books and stuff. Uh, here's we come back. Here's Fonzie getting ready to uh, perform the milk can that I showed you earlier. So that's this is can We're back. Uh, and this, as we kind of come in is my uh, my office so this is where I kind of do my work and uh, do my things uh, before we go in I do have a with the morgue uh, it's a really special place and I, I've got security and cameras and stuff all over the place so um, if anybody tries to break in they'd get in but they never get out so yeah all right, that's good excellent so as we come into the office Again, it's a little little brighter in here, but I have lots of lots of neat stuff. Um, that's George up there. I have lots of Houdini handcuffs. Uh, again, this was all my friend Phillips. This was stuff that uh, Doug Hidney had given uh, Phil before he passed away and was in the Magic Museum uh, for a lot of years. Uh, here's some stuff from Siegfried and Roy. I got lots of uh, Houdini stuff here. More books, lots of uh, fun things, of course. Another uh, favorite magician, Lance Lance Burton from Las Vegas. Uh, Harry Blackstone. That's the very first tuxedo I ever wore when I was like 15 years old. That's me wearing it. Man, look at all that hair locked up and trying to escape. Actually, there's another good one there. That's my uh, longtime friend back when we were teenagers, James Seelan. Again, lives in Vegas now and probably the best, best cruise ship magician of all time. Just amazing. Uh, lots of little fits. David Copperfield, Ravine. There's a uh, Doug Henning poster performing the water book or so. Uh, this is another really important piece. This was uh, Len Ventus, who was the founder and the very first member and the very first president of the International Brother Magicians that was founded in Winnipeg back in 1922. Uh, Len was a, a good friend. Uh, he was just a couple days short of, of 96 when he passed away, but Len was inspir 
operational and, and again, get me going. He actually met Houdini when Houdini was in Winnipeg in, uh, in 1923. But he wrote this, this is really cool. To Winnipeg's pride and joy, our star escape artist, Dean Gunnarsson, predicting a bright future, August 6, 1987. Len That was before any international TV shows or or anything. So this was his typewriter that he that he used to uh, to send out all his correspondence. Never owned a computer. I used to tell him if he owned a computer, he could have owned the whole world. Uh, this is his membership card, member number one. I'm, I remember like 37,000 something something, and I remember number one. Uh, again, John Bushy's uh, uh, coffee table. Uh, a lot of the stuff that the pictures and things that John and I escaped me from over over the years. This is uh, my desk, my office. Lots of people up there. Lots of just kind of desk stuff, things that are important to me. My daughters. Uh, there's a good poster of, of uh, picture of Bill Brace. I don't know if you can see it, but. Bill was uh, like my best friend for about 25 years. Retired RCMP officer. Uh, we met with Philip and I again, back in the, the mid 80s. We remained friends after that. And again, lots of uh, pictures, posters. Uh, I really like this. This is my uh, security bars from my office. Uh, made into a cobweb uh, effect so nobody can get in or out. It was uh, made by John McDonald, the, the welder of my, my TV show from before, during, and after. Really great, great guy. Um, and again, more, more Houdini posters. Uh, Tony Curtis in the movie. Uh, had a great experience working with Tony Curtis on a TV show in Japan in 1991. Uh, this is my uh, escape or die. Uh, slot machine uh, sometimes you win sometimes you don't but you don't know unless you try and give it your all ah look at that hey we got a winner you guys are good luck you guys are the winner are you, you, always, you always gotta know when to hold them and when to to run the table but uh, uh, this is another cool thing is the uh, my piano um, Again, a morgue, I call it the morgue, but it's a really a living, breathing place. And uh, I have lots of, of, of good energy here and that. And I have a, a friend, uh, hey Mary, are you here? Would you like to play a little song for everybody? Give us a little song. There she goes. She's a little dated or whatever, but she's, a good, she's good at what she does. That's her picture there. That's that's fine, Mary. Thank you. Good job. This was her uh, her pet. The only thing known to survive. So. Yeah. Wow. Give her some bites. And uh, yeah, so this is it again. Over over the last few decades, I brought posters back from all these countries never knowing where I was going to put them or whatever uh, this is a poster from Taiwan a few years ago and Thailand and all over and stuff so even my my ceiling I don't know if you can see it but I have kind of lasers and stuff like that uh, there's a cool piece my Dean Gunnarsson uh, playing cards each each card is uh, different and uh, has a different picture and poster in there. If you want, you can get them from uh, Toad Hall Magic, Toad Hall Toys in uh, Winnipeg, or you can get it from uh, 808 Magic in Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, not many came to North America, but it's a fun little collector piece. And uh, this is my, uh, my fireplace. Hey Mary, could you light us a little fire? Oh, great, thank you Mary. Sometimes in Canada it gets a little cold and stuff during the winter time, so Murray lights his little fires to keep us all warm. I don't believe in psychics and mediums in any way, so but I like to have fun with them and too. So, and everybody should have a talking head. So uh
that kind of wraps it up for now. I tried to give you a quick tour, even though we went on for quite a bit. There's always lots to see. And uh, hey, Herman, how are you doing today? Oh, Herman, say, say hi to everybody. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes he's quiet, sometimes he's not. Oh. Well, that's the uh, the morgue, and maybe I can try and give you a better update uh, sometime. Uh, I don't have the uh, the Wi-Fi hooked up in here right now, so I can't I can't do anything uh, I can't do anything live for you. But or inside the morgue, but sometime soon I'll have that hooked up, and uh, maybe we can do a live show. So if there's anything you've seen or liked or have any questions. By all means, uh, leave a comment, make a space, and uh, if you're ever up in the Rocky Mountain National Park area of Clear Lake and Onono, uh, once this virus is, has vanished, uh, come back, give them, send me a message, drop them to say hi. I don't really have it open to the public, but uh, I give lots of private tours and stuff to people that are coming by. So we'll, uh, we'll lock her back up for another day. So none of the spirits come in or out. And you guys take care. Thanks for dropping by. And remember, nothing is impossible if you truly believe. We'll escape from the virus one way or the other. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.